Welcome to Street Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The 28th regular session of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia was held. Merchants of Montpellier were granted tax privileges by the King Oshin. In Turkey, the broadcasting license of a radio station was suspended for talking about the genocide against Armenians. The German Foreign Ministry summoned the Turkish ambassador to MFA. The expedition discovered several new monuments. It is a real irony when the president of a recognized dictatorial state makes accusation against our country. Armenia final, our Atlas won two medals at the European Championship of Wrestling. On free July 20th, regular session of the National Assembly was held. The agenda was presented by Gayane Tadevoysan, the Vice Chairwoman of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. President Lydia Markosyan and President of the National Council of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armena Kablehamian, were also present. President Lydia Markosyan greeted the attendees. The first part of the agenda was on the treaty related to UN World Organization Intellectual Property, Genetic Resources and Traditional Knowledge. The deputies expressed their position by accepting the contract except for Article 4, which was the subject of an intense discussion. President Armena Gabrahamian also expressed his opinion on important issues, making certain emphasis. And in the second part of the agenda, the conference to be held by the Armenian Genocide Museum Institute, where President Armena Gabrahamian also submitted an application for participation. Although the Museum Institute thanked the President for his interest to the conference, but the organizer did not accept his candidacy, saying that he does not meet the standards of the conference, which are based on the recognition of the genocide. While President Armena Gabriamian is the one who included that candidacy following the Armenian issue on the rights of the Armenians of Western Armenia and the genocide issues committed against Armenians within the framework of the UN and international authorities. At the end of the session, a number of other current issues were also discussed. An original photograph of a document from 1407 in which the Armenian ruler of Kiligia King Orshin grants tax privileges to the merchants of Montpellier. With these merchants had the right to freely enter the trading ports of the Kingdom of Kiligia. In 1407, on November 17, the young King Levon IV and his uncle Hetum II were killed near the fortress Anavarza that after being trapped by the Mongol colonel. Orshin announced his right to the throne. He was opposed by his elder brother, the former King Zambad, who wanted to become king again after returning from Constantinople. A fight started between the brothers and Oshinvon. The official coronation took place in 1409 on September 4 in Tarsus in the Church of St. Sophia. Oshin Hetumian was the 13th king of Armenian Kingdom of Kilika. He was originally from Hetumian family. Oshin was born in 1283 in the family of King Levon and Queen Keran, belonging to the royal family. He was the youngest son of the family. The Supreme Council of Radio and Television of Turkey has suspended the validity of the license of ASIC radio broadcasting from Istanbul. Armenia Haber informs about this. It is noted that such a decision was made due to non-compliance with previous decisions and the continuation of practices contrary to the instructions. It should be noted that previously the radio company's activities were suspended for five days for the phrase, the 109th anniversary of the massacres carried out in Armenia, carried out by the name of deportation, massacre and genocide had rolled on for another year. It is published statement the radio station counters the rightness of the decision. An application for payment in installments was submitted for the monetary fine received along with the suspension of broadcasting as it was in the decision that accepting this the first partial payment was made. The radio station noted adding that it is obvious that they will struggle against the law and go to court. They note that they will necessarily implement legal measures relating to the decision made. At the same time, ASIC Radio, which has been broadcasting for 40 years, will continue broadcasting according to the same unique journalistic principles and the same responsibility, the statement says. The German Foreign Ministry summoned the Turkish ambassador to MFA in connection with the gesture of grey wool shown by Mary Demiral, defender of the Turkish national football team during the European Championship match with Austria. This is reported by a Reuters citing the German Foreign Ministry. The noisy gesture of the Turkish football player was condemned by the Minister of the Interior 
of Germany in human rights organization. Let's remind that this scandal arose during Euro 2024 yesterday. Moreover, the football player published this photo on the X social network where he showed the gray wolves gesture and wrote how happy he is who can say that he is a Turk. As stated by the German Minister of the Interior, Nancy Fitzer, the German authorities expect the UFA will investigate this case and consider the issue of sanctions. While the media have already reported that UFA has launched an investigation into the incident. In June 2024, the expeditions of the Research Center of Historical and Cultural Heritage, the expedition discovered several new monuments, among which is the newly discovered Cave of Holzor Village. As a result of field work accompanied by heavy rain, the expedition discovered several new monuments, among them the newly discovered cave of Halitzor village and the projects of their protection zones were drawn up. While accepting the credentials of the newly appointed Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Canada, Kevin Hamilton, the President of Baku made senseless and baseless statements, reconfirming his territorial claims to Eastern Armenia and his static course of interfering in the internal affairs of our country. The Pan-Armenian Union, Carmen Sherwan Nakhijevan, warns about this. They point out that this is a real joke when the president of a country, recognized as a dictator by international human rights organizations, make accusations against our country in the even that when he himself has launched at least two large-scale wars against Eastern Armenia and Artsakh in recent years, with all their possible consequences, which can be implicitly defined as crimes against humanity. When talking about international law, doesn't Ilham Aliyev remember the 120,000 Armenians of Artsakh when he made the innocent civilian population a humanitarian disaster based on ethnic and racial discrimination? Isn't it a radical violation of international law to create military, political propaganda, humanitarian conditions that can be combined with ethnic cleansing and defined as genocide? Doesn't the president of Baku remember massacres in Sumgait in 1988, massacres in 1992, looting and forced displacement of Armenians in Maraga, an Armenian inhabited settlement, as a result of which the Thai historical government Sherwan and Nahijevan areas were deprived of the Armenian presence? The Pan Armenian Union government Sherwan Nahijevan strongly condemns the statements of the president of Baku. Doesn't Ilham Aliyev remember how, for example, he came up with the idea of this? destroying the Armenian cemetery of Old Jura. It is mentioned in the statement. The representatives of Eastern Armenia won two medals in one evening at the U20 European Greco-Roman Wrestling Championship in Serbia. Gaspar Terterian, weighing 67 kg meteorite Hovanisian, representing Russia in the finals. Hovanisian won the Armenian final. Eric Dermatevoisian, weighing 82 kg, defeated the wrestler from Croatia in the small final and became the bronze medalist of the championship. Let's remember that Yurik Hovayan won the bronze medal of the AUU20 yesterday, who ahead of time beat NS Ulguya from Turkey. This was all for today. Goodbye.